Chris Russo and in this video we're going to talk about development of HMOs. HMOs, housing in multiple occupation. So why are we talking about that? Developments are quite risky. One of the safest development that you can do, especially at the beginning, once you start to get experience in, in properties, is the development of HMOs. So basically, you don't need usually planning permission. So there's no need for planning permission. As long as there's not any Article 4 area implemented by the council. And Article 4 is a legality that allows councils to stop certain types of permitted developments. I'll give you an example. Blackpool, in, when I bought this particular building in 2020, used to say uh, the planning wouldn't allow it. However, in planning it themselves, uh, they're not allowed in Blackpool. And then I checked. Well, okay, they're not allowed. Fair enough. What is your Article 4? And they said, we have no Article 4. Okay, so there is permitted development. Oh, crap. Basically, they were trying to discourage people from doing HMOs in, in Blackpool, uh, whereas they didn't have an Article 4. Uh, the Article 4 is in, Bla in Blackpool. I've got this uh, nice HMO here. The government has locked in the competition for me. Thank you uh, to the government, uh, the, the, the council in Blackpool, so make my life easier going forward. Obviously, I'm not making more HMOs in, in Blackpool. There you go, but uh, this one is safe from any competition any legal competition, put it that way. So Article 4 can stop change of use from single family home into C4, class C4, which is an HMO up to six households. And there's Article 4 that so do stop other permit permitted developments. So what you have to check before you, you go ahead is make sure there's not any Article 4 in place for HMOs in the city you are thinking about investing. If that is not the case, if you don't have any Article 4, then you can go and develop as much as you want. And nobody can stop you from doing that. Nobody can stop you from refurbishing a house, a building, to make it into an HMO. The only thing is you've got to abide by fire safety regulation, minimum space requirements for the rooms. You can read those requirements on the internet, but basically normally is a 6.51 square meters minimum size of a, of a room excluding any en-suites inside the room. But you can, uh, you can go and do the reading yourself. Some councils are a bit different, but you can. it's always better that you ask the council for their requirements. There's some minimum areas requirements, depending on the number of households you're applying for. You've got to read that. And also there's, um, there's requirements for amount of storage in a kitchen, number of sockets in a kitchen, number of sockets in each room, and other small things which I may not remember right now. But, but, the most important thing is fire safety. Because the prosecutions that have been carried out against landlords is due to fire safety. Not because there's any real danger. It's as if, uh, it's kind of funny, it's kind of funny. If a family lives there, uh, you rent it out to a family, uh, some fire happens and you don't have fire doors, they don't prosecute you. However, they do prosecute you if the same thing happens and you rent it to individual households. It's insanity square. However, this is welcome to uh, the current world. Because we've got this current world, so current world that if you rent a house, a room, a house, room by room, then if you don't have a license, you can actually be a criminal. This is ridiculous. However, Fire safety regulation. This is the most important thing because this is where you can actually get prosecuted. So what you need is fire doors, very easy to install. You need to put auto closers on the fire doors. It's to install a grade A fire alarm system if you've got three stories. Less than that, they've got to be the, the fire uh, the smoke detectors that have got to be interlinked. However, to be safe, even in this building, I put a grade A fire alarm system. Just to be, just to be safe, because what happens is all regulations get tighter and tighter over time. So they they, they tighten the news. So I'm I'm making sure that whatever news they're actually going to use, I'm always going to be over compliant. Ceilings are going to have 30 minutes fire resistance is something that they hardly check. I don't know anyone has been checked for that. 
that is easy to do anyway. You double board the ceiling or you use false ceiling. It's extremely easy to do. Uh, minimum uh, space requirements for the rooms, some other space requirements for kitchen and dining areas. Depending on the number of uh, people you're uh, applying for, uh, you need to get a minimum number of sockets in the kitchen. I think I mentioned that. And depending on the size of the HMO, then you may require to get two sinks, two dish, one dishwasher and washing machines, these sort of things. So do, they may require you to do that. And again, what, what I normally do whenever I, before I buy a property, I just read all the regulations from the council. They've got, they write it all the time, so they change slightly from council to council, but I always try to, to make sure that I'm over. I make the asset over compliant. This is always, always worth it. I hope that uh, you liked uh, this video. Should you want to know more, there is a link below here. Read the book where all this information and maybe more is in there. This is part of that book. We hope it's been useful and we'll see you next time.